Welcome to Food All You Never Wanted to Know. I promised that I would talk a little bit about pink banana squash because we saw that at the auction. And it's, it's just an awesome, awesome squash. And we'll learn a little bit more as we go through this. But a note first about these flowers. <laughs> okay. Um, I just love the John Denver song. Why flowers in a mason jar? You know. <laughs> If any of you remember that song, I don't know. Uh, these are not wildflowers. These are zinnias, and I grew them in my garden. They're not food, but they're food for the soul, and they're food for the bees. So I guess they're food, right, in, in a kind of a way. Now, this banana squash I did not grow, okay? So I bought it at a local farm. I didn't know that they had it. I was so excited when I saw it. And anyway, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut this up, I'm gonna bake it in the oven, and we're gonna do some other things with it. I discovered it last week. We actually bought one, and I made a pie out of it. Look how beautiful and orange it is in there. Okay, I'm gonna cut a couple chunks that will hopefully fit in this pan. And this is my trusty knife, Cutco knife that we got for a dollar at a yard sale, and that was incredible. I'm sure they didn't have any idea what they were selling. Anyway. As we cut this, always keep your hands out of the way. All right, see that? Wow. See that? Isn't that awesome? That looks amazing. So then the way you would cook this is you need to keep cutting it down in such a way that you'll be able to put it in a pan. So you continue cutting it. Now, did you do anything with the seeds? If I had grown this, and I'm going to try to grow this next year because um, I grew a different squash this year out of this family and it didn't do well at all. Um, it was chewed by bugs and got destroyed. There are several different squash families, and the seeds are big. Now, the way you would save these, anyway, so you can, you can see, save seeds from four or five squash families at a time, and they will not cross with each other, with one another, at least if you're far enough away from your neighbors, and we are, so I don't have to worry about that. But you would put these seeds, you would take them out of here, scoop it out, and and put the seeds in a sieve, wash them really well. I gotta say that that smells incredible. Oh. Like the smell, if I, if I could put on the video what this smells like, it smells like, I don't even know how to describe it, the freshest, the freshest oh. squash you've ever smelled in your life. I hope this one is as good as the one from last week because it was awesome. We ate some for dinner the night we had it. Okay. And it was smooth, it was sweet, but it was kind of nutty sweet. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to fit these in here. I may have to get another pan. I mean, if you, if you imagine, I'm, I just, I'm trying to think of a way to describe the smell. If you just, if you, if you have like a pumpkin, like a, it smells like a sweet pumpkin. Uh-huh. Almost. Yeah. It is. It's sweet. The flesh is very smooth when you cook it, if it's the same as the other one. Wow. I barely made it. Yeah, those are huge. Okay. So I'm going to dot this with butter a little bit so it doesn't dry out and cover it with foil, but don't, don't, do not allow the foil to touch the squash. Mound it up so it's like a big... Whatever. Now, why is that? Why don't you want the foil touching the squash? You don't want f aluminum foil touching anything hot, especially things with acid like tomato sauce, but I don't like aluminum in my food. There have been bad things sort of linked to eating aluminum. <laughs> so anyway, um, but I'm going to put this in the oven and we will be back later. One thing I forgot to mention is I took this out. Did you see how easy that was to get out? If you're doing a pumpkin, it's so hard and stringy and nasty. And this is, my hands are pretty clean. 
So this is a drier fleshed squash um, that really doesn't take much to work with. So I feel like a kid with Play-Doh. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So this is great squash and we'll see, uh, we're gonna cook it probably at 350 degrees for one to two hours, depending on how long it takes. It's big and chunky. So we'll be back in a little bit. Well, it took over two hours for that squash to get soft, nice and soft. We tasted it. It's luscious. I think we could eat the whole thing. We took half of it. I took half of it and put it in the food processor. And I'm just about to finish mixing that up. This is the other half. And we, we just might eat this for dinner tonight if I have enough puree. So I'm going to turn this on. It might get loud, so I'll step away a little bit. That'll do it. And I'm going to measure this out, see if I have enough to make pumpkin pie. This is the most smooth, creamy, wonderful, wonderful puree I've ever seen for pumpkin pie. It's not drippy. It's not watery. This is going to make the best pumpkin pie ever. So now I'm going to measure out. I need one and three quarters cups. And I'm hoping that there's enough here that I won't have to dip into that second half because we decided it tasted so good that we would like it for dinner tonight as a wonderful side dish. So I think this half is going to make it. And remember, when I say half, that was not half of the whole thing. That was half of the half of that pink banana squash. So I've got plenty here to make pumpkin pie.